Hello, my name is Sean Beeman. I'm an anesthesiologist at the University of Pittsburgh and the chief anesthesiologist at UPMC Presbyterian Hospital. Today I'm going to discuss teleemergency medicine from a United States perspective. I work at UPMC Presbyterian University Hospital where we have 600 beds and have a large trauma program which receives over 5,000 trauma admissions a year. We also have a comprehensive transplant center and care for patients with many other forms of pathology. I'm pleased to be talking to you today about emergency care and trauma care because our first chair, Dr. Peter Saffer, who is from Austria, uh, pioneered the care of injured patients. He had a direct hand in the creation of what we now today know as CPR and worked very hard to train the first trained emergency medical service workers to provide medical care while transporting injured patients. Today, I'll discuss pre-hospital teleemergency medicine briefly, in-hospital teleemergency medicine using two models in the United States, and novel telecare models. Pre-hospital teleemergency medicine came about when a transition occurred from funeral home staff transporting injured patients in the United States to trained emergency medical service workers transporting patients to the hospital while also caring for them and frequently contributing to saving their lives. In 1965, a presidential commission called for better organization and training of the staff that transport injured patients. And one of the calls was to assign radio channels for communication between these workers and physicians at the hospital. This was the beginning of what my colleagues in emergency medicine know as medical command, where a physician communicates with and issues orders to EMS personnel when they seek direction. I believe this to be the first telehealth connection that was ever devised and is used frequently every day in the United States, and I suspect the rest of the world, via a radio or phone line. These pictures show the evolution of pre-hospital teleemergency medicine. On the left, you can see workers in the 1940 who are funeral home workers gathering near their hearse, which they use to transport injured patients. In the middle, anyone in the audience from America might recognize this as a screenshot from a 1970s TV show, but it does show in the bottom left a simple device telephone radio used for paramedics to contact a physician at the hospital to which they were transporting their patient. And on the right, like many centers, show one of our helicopters by which we're almost constantly connected to the nurses and emergency medicine paramedics who staff the care on our helicopters. Moving to in-hospital teleemergency medicine, it's defined as an immediate real-time interaction, audio and often video connection between an urban hub and a rural hospital. 30 to 50% of hospitals use some sort of this connection. Most commonly though in the United States, it's used in radiology departments. Next most likely in emergency departments as we'll discuss today and in six and a half or so percent of cardiology, stroke, or heart attack programs. This communication is often via phone, connecting a smaller hospital to a larger hospital, and the conversation often centers around the suitability of transfer and acceptance of an injured patient, frequently using um, computer connectivity or similar emergency medical records, the physicians on either end of the conversation can also review images together. This type of model um, has been associated with outcomes that are comparable to traditional care without a connection um, to a large hospital. But diagnosis was found to have been changed in 18% of cases in which this type of teleemergency medicine was used. Treatment was changed in 52% of the cases and a confirmation of both the diagnosis and treatment was found in the balance of cases using this type of common model. 
A two and a half year study of 21 hospitals found that only three and a half percent of emergency department encounters utilize teleemergency medicine in this way. But I list for you the most common diagnoses during which it was used. And as you can see, um, they comprise a large uh, portion of life-threatening diagnoses. A second model of teleemergency medicine is growing in the United States, whereby distant emergency departments are not only connected to a more centralized emergency department, but they also have the ability to be connected to subspecialty consultants, most often at a larger hospital. This occurs in cardiology around the diagnosis and treatment of myocardial infarction, for ophthalmology regarding the care of eye injuries and other conditions, nephrology for consideration of dialysis institution, and in my hospital it happens most commonly with neurologists regarding the care of stroke patients and the guidance of whether or not to administer thrombolytics and referral to interventional management of strokes. Outcomes have been measured in multiple studies regarding this kind of model where a distant emergency department is connected to subspecialty consultants and reduced transfer rates have been found, greater trauma stabilization before transfer has been found, enhancement of local skills of the staff at the smaller hospitals has been reported, a greater adherence to clinical protocols has been found, particularly in the areas of care of patients who have myocardial infarction or cerebrovascular accident, and reduce morbidity and mortality, particularly in injured patients. As I suspect will occur in the rest of the world, in the United States, telehealth models are expanding. This expansion has certainly occurred during the COVID pandemic. Uh, but is also riding on the coattails of better and better technology that we have access to and a more connected healthcare community. Many of you may be familiar with the idea of tele-ICU. This is a popular model which is growing in popularity in the United States by which an intensivist is able to care for critically ill patients at a distance with no other intensivist present at the hospital in question. Other models that have been used are currently being used and are being expanded include teledialysis, telepharmacy, telecare planning or transition of care, telerehabilitation, teleoncology. And I'm proud to tell you that my department is leveraging telehealth to provide preoperative evaluation, consultation, and optimization recommendations for patients that are far away in the catchment area of our medical center. I want to thank you for your attention. I offer some references for your review, um, should you find them helpful. And I'm very glad to answer your questions later live or receive them via email at any time. And I thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you today.